Hi guys and welcome back to another anaesthesia tutorial. Today we are talking about the shunt equation, which is core knowledge for the FRCA primary OSCE viva. So it's really good to be able to explain it succinctly. So let's go through it. Here we have an alveolus. And in an ideal world, all of the blood coming out of the heart would go through the alveoli and then return nicely oxygenated back to the left side of the heart. But in reality, a proportion of the blood is shunted through the lung and doesn't pick up any oxygen. And obviously, the more blood is shunted, the less oxygen you're going to pick up and the less effective your cardiorespiratory system is going to be. Now, anaesthetists love to make equations out of things like this, so let's look at some terms. To begin with, we're going to look at Q, or flow. This is the number of litres of blood per minute that are being pumped by the heart. Now, each of those litres of blood can carry a content of oxygen, which is C. And if we multiply those two terms together, we get oxygen flux which is millilitres of oxygen moving through the body per minute. I like to imagine little delivery trucks, where C is how much each truck can carry, and Q is how many trucks per minute are passing through the system. So let's put some of these terms in our diagram. We've got the total flow coming out of the heart, which is QT, our total cardiac output. And assuming no blood is lost into the lungs or gained out of thin air, that's the same flow that's going to return to the left side of the heart. Some of that flow is going to go via the alveoli, and some of that's going to be shunted. So here we make our first quick equation. The total flow is the sum of the shunted flow and the flow going through the alveolar capillaries. Now let's add in our content term to turn it from flow into flux. So the cardiac output from the right side of the heart, headed towards the lungs, has got venous oxygen content. And the shunted blood doesn't pick up any more oxygen, so that's going to have venous oxygen content too. But the blood passing through the alveoli picks up lots of oxygen and is fully saturated, so that gets its own term. Now as you can see from the diagram, the blood returning from the alveoli and the shunted blood are going to mix to form what is your arterial blood, which has arterial oxygen content. Now we have all the terms we need for our final shunt equation. Here you can see that the total oxygen flux back to the left side of the heart is the sum of the shunted oxygen flux and the alveolar oxygen flux. To simplify things, we want to get rid of this QC term which as you can see from the previous equation, we can simply substitute in, in terms of QT and QS. As you can see, all we've done is rearrange equation one and stick it into equation two. Next, we just multiply out the brackets, rearrange to get the QS terms on the left and the QT terms on the right, put it back into neat brackets, and divide through by the two terms on each side to leave us with the shunt equation. Now a lot of people will just memorize the shunt equation and that works for the exam, but you do run the risk of mixing up the terms, especially the CC, the CV and the CA terms. If you just try and remember that the CCO2 is the biggest oxygen content because that's the one that's picked up all the blood from the alveoli. So that one has to be at the front because you're having to minus the other terms from it. Hopefully this has been useful. If you like it, please comment, like, subscribe and visit anesthesia.net for more useful tutorials.